she's got a meeting. Frank says they're ready to go. Oh, now we do. Okay, bye. I want to welcome everybody to our Des Moines City Council meeting. Prior to the start of tonight's meeting, we're going to have some very special awards. Uh, Jason Van Essen from our Community Development Department is going to go over them, but we're going to talk about historic preservation and all the great work that's been done by people to uh, design and uh, not only new, but adaptively uh, reuse lots of uh, great places in and around Des Moines. So, Jason, turn it over to you. Thank you, Mayor County. Uh, every year, the Historic Preservation Commission uh, solicits nominations for um, historic preservation projects. They're well done and deserving of credit uh, to just kind of thank them for spending that little extra effort to uh, preserve uh, Des Moines history. So we have three awards tonight, and I have a few pictures of each project, and um, we'll get started here. The first award is for the Liberty Building, the Hyatt Hotel. It's an adapter reuse uh, project at 418 6th Avenue. Uh, if the, um, the uh, party that's here to receive the awards today wants to go ahead and come forward, they may do so. That's the Liberty De uh, Building Development Group was the developer. Uh, the architect is GEYA Architecture, Inc. The, uh, the property was built in 1924. There, here's a few uh, before pictures. So here's the building currently. Uh, the renovation included uh, interior renovation of, of portions of the first floor and then floors three through eight for a 93 room hotel. Um, kind of the primary reason for the award from the Historic Preservation Commission standpoint is the uh, sensitive entrance. Uh, they had to make the building function for the hotel while still respecting the architecture of the original building. You can see that the building was originally 
developed with a main entrance in the center, but they were did something that worked, respect the building, and still allowed the Hyatt to have their own entrance. So I'll go ahead and flip through the pictures and hand out the awards. All right. The, our, our next item is the same architects that like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Just why don't we uh, we'll get a picture with our uh, chair of our historic sounds, uh, sounds good board. Well, they're shaking hands. This is Susan Holderness. She's the chair of the Historic Preservation Commission. Award number two is the Oliver Her Herricks Post Office Building, otherwise known as Aqualand, uh, 3600 uh, Sixth Avenue. This is a commercial interior exterior rehabilitation. Uh, the developers Parks Area Foundation, Architect GUADA Architecture. And then on this one, we also have a certificate for the, the contractor uh, who worked diligently on, diligently on the project, that's Contractor Group, Inc. So here's a historic photograph of the building located on the corner of uh, Six, then um, Euclid. This is the picture of the building before they started work. And here's some after photographs. You can see that they spent a lot of uh, attention to detail of looking at that historic photograph and re uh, restoring the exterior back to its 1919 um, original exterior um, look, including the um, redevelopment of that corner entrance that sits at an angle to the intersection. So I'd like to invite the, uh, the group to come forward and receive their certificates. Susan, we're up again. While they're doing so, I'd like to point out that this was a really a community effort. The Parks Area Foundation has been working diligently on this one and worked really hard with the city and uh, to try to make this project to go and did a great job. Last award goes to the Salisbury House uh, project. Uh, the developer is the, well, that's the, owned by the Salisbury House Foundation, uh, OPN Architects as the architecture firm. If they want to come forward and receive their award. This, um, I, everybody I think in the community is familiar with the Salisbury House. It was built in the 1920s. Um, over the years, they've been before us to receive awards for a lot of exterior and um, renovations, they worked diligently to try to get the building shored up, get new mechanical in it. Now they were able to move forward and look at some of the um, interior work that needed to be addressed. Over the years, the, the interior limestone walls had uh, been, you know, slowly getting soil, dirt, their salt um, build up, and so they had to figure out a way to clean that up and uh, um, restore the interior. So they were diligently to do uh, very low impact cleaning methods. And these are some before photographs. You can kind of see the uh, discoloring in the photographs from the, the years of buildup. And here we have some after. You can see the restoring of the brighter color of those walls, the Great Hall, and the, the, the other um, public areas within the interior. Oops, sorry about that. 
Thank you. All right, and we have uh, the work of the Salisbury House Foundation and the OPN Architects. Uh, thank you so much and uh, for the, the good work that's been done up there. So, Okay, we have one more um, presentation to make, and I'd like to have uh, Mary. Come on. Uh, we celebrate the Universal Hour of Peace, and I would like to, uh, uh, Mary, if you could kind of tell us what's going on and uh, how you're going to handle it, and we've got a special proclamation for that presentation. Nice to see you all here. Um, I'm Mary Hammersley. I'm uh, on the faculty at the School of Metaphysics, and this is Jeremy Youngers. He's one of our students. And uh, we ask people at the new year, the hour from 11.30 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. over the new year, to bring in the new year with a consciousness of peace. Because peace influences us within ourselves, within our families, within our communities, and over the world. And uh, at the School of Metaphysics, we teach about positive thinking and how the thoughts that we have each day that we populate our mind with have a profound influence. And that's why we're asking people all over Des Moines, all over the world, to read the Universal Peace Covenant at midnight of the new year into 2012. And I've brought some Universal Peace Covenants. If you might be wanting to participate, um, and there, you can also get them online at peacedome.org. And we'd love to have everyone participate. It will make the world a better place. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, United States of America has historically been a melting pot where people of all nationalities, religious, faiths, and cultures come together as one. And as the strength of our great city rests in the cooperation of the community and of its citizens, and whereas our only hope of establishing peace among diverse people is through recognizing our connectedness and common dream of peace on earth, and whereas the first day of the new year typically denotes hopeful expectation and positive resolve in the hearts and minds of our citizens, and whereas the School of Metaphysics, a worldwide organization founded in our country to promote peace, understanding, goodwill through teaching that living peaceably begins by thinking peacefully, has called for a universal hour of peace over the midnight hour, December 31st, 2011 to January 1, 2012. Now therefore, I, the mayor of, of Des Moines, on behalf of the Des Moines City Council and our citizens, do hereby proclaim Saturday, December 31st, 2011, at 11.30 p.m. as the universal hour of peace when the people of our great community might stand united in common purpose, committing themselves in thought and action so peace may move across the face of the earth in the dawning of the new year. So thank you very much for your, your efforts and uh, we'll all uh, hope for peace in the new year. Appreciate it very, very much. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Should we go ahead with the Municipal Housing Agency Board? 
You want to see if uh, Brian's back there? Oh, Brian's right there. There he is. Well, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Let's call to order the uh, Municipal Housing Agency Governing Board meeting uh, uh, and ask the clerk to call roll, please. County. Here. Moore. Reese. Here. Mahaffey. Here. Gensley. Here. Meyer. Present. Okay, item number two is approving uh, and uh, Board Member Moore is here. Uh, to approve the conveyance of 3600 and 3602 Southeast 11th Street and 5910 and 5912 Southwest 12th Street and 5918 and 5920 Southwest 12th Street and 1170 and 1172 9th Street and 1176 and 1178 9th Street and 428 430 East Leach Avenue and 43 343 and 345 East Creston Avenue and 922 and 927 Emma Avenue to the Community Housing Initiatives, Inc., CHI, Board Communication Number 11-750. Uh, that's approving that conveyance. Is there anyone in the audience here to speak on that item tonight before our Municipal Housing Agency Board? Seeing none, could we have a motion, please? I'll move. Item's been moved. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same. The item passes. It's the only item on our uh, agenda this evening. Could we have a motion to adjourn? Move. move. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same. We sit adjourned. Thank you. We'll go ahead and start council meeting in just a moment. Last I heard it. this evening it's going to be by our own city council member Chris Coleman we'd ask those that are going to participate with us that you stand at this time thank you as we begin our meeting tonight we ask the Lord to look down on us as we begin to conduct our business representing the citizens of Des Moines in all of our work tonight Thank you for an outstanding 
2011 and all the blessings that have been bestowed upon the city of Des Moines and our citizens. Thank you for the people who have worked each day to make our city a better place. The awards that we have achieved and been recognized with are a testament to our employees' strong work ethic, creativity, and efforts to make us the best possible place to live and work and grow and raise a family. So as we conclude 2011, we thank you for everything that happened and ask for your blessings on us as a council and our staff and our team as we prepare for an even better 2012. Amen. All right, call the uh, meeting of the uh, Des Moines City Council, December 19th, to order, and ask the clerk to take roll, please. County? Here. Coleman? Here. Moore? Here. Grease? Here. Mahaffey? Here. Hensley? Here. Meyer? Here. We have a quorum. Uh, ask on item two to approve the agenda as presented and or as amended. I'll move. Seven yes. Item three is to pr um, approve the consent agenda. And uh, are there no items pulled tonight? Uh, there's one item, uh, 4B. Uh, 4B. All right, item um, 4B. These are items 3 through 41 this evening. Uh, and Council Member um, Hensley wishes to speak on item 4B. And uh, um, Council Member Moore and I vote no on item 5. Are there any other items this evening that anyone in the audience would like to pull for clarification or further discussion? All right, seeing none, could we have a motion for the I'll balance, move. please? Been moved. <clears throat> Seven yes. All right, takes us to item 4B, that's approving the alcoholic beverage license applications for the following, and B is Ingersoll at 3711 Ingersoll. It's a C liquor license. Uh, Mrs. Hensley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is the applicant for 4B Ingersoll Dinner Theater in the audience? Do you want to come forward so I can ask you a few questions, please? Right up here. So you're Keisha Barnes? Yes, I am. And your address is? Uh, 30, oh, excuse me. The business is 3711 Ingersoll, but my address is 2323 East Porter Avenue, number 77. Okay. And can you tell me, have you had experience running a uh, restaurant bar before? No, I haven't. And what are your plans for this location? My plans for the locations are kind of more of a, a it's kind of a diverse um, approach to um, mature entertainment and family business orient orientation to, like, um, old movies and popcorn. Also, we would offer um, hamburgers and hot dogs and French fries for those those kind of um, um, events. And also, for sorry, I'm a little nervous. Um, okay. Also, um, I am a teacher, a middle school teacher, and so it would be nice to have a venue where we could have performances. Like we have a talent show next month. That would be a great place. Not a huge money maker, but for food, we could make some money on that. Um, also, there are local comedians that I've been in contact with that we could have as a regular kind of a rotation. Um, I'd like to keep that as like the third Wednesday or the third Thursday, maybe. No, that's the plan. Third Thursdays, comedians. First Saturdays would be um, more of, um, well, it's kind of complicated, but just having comedians, family oriented. Um, so what are the hours of operation going to be then? The hours of operation during the weekends would be any time from uh, 9 to about 1, 1.45, I think it'd be a good time to close. Um, so we have time to get everybody out and do everything. But then during the week on, which would be mostly a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, the hours of operation would be 6 to about 10. And so do you plan on being on site during all the hours of operation? Yeah, for most of them, yes, yes. And do you have any connection with the previous owners of any of the previous owners in the last two years? No, I do not. Okay, and so how did you decide to go into business at the Ingersoll Dinner Theater? Well, it's been kind of a, it's been a, a project hobby thing for me for a while, uh, an idea to, to open up um, my own 
place and um, it just was a good opportunity. I saw that it was open and I, ha I have saved some savings and it looks like a, we'll try to make a go of it. <laughs> so. And now you're com you're signing up, indicating that you're going to have 50% food, 50% bar. Yes. And you'll be able to do that without the uh, grease trap and the other issues. We will be able to short term. Um, WRA, we've been in contact with them, so for short term, yes. But I have um, some some of my savings that I've been saving up to start the business, and some loans that I have, um, which will cover that in 60 days. The, so the cover the installation within 60 days. And you'll be able to do that within 60 days? Well, yes, I ha yes, I have the, um, my loan is approved and I have some of my savings, yep. Mm -hmm. Tell me why, you, help me feel comfortable why I should be supportive of this because we've had nothing but problems at that location. Okay. You have no previous experience, no track record, and I'm not feeling comfortable. Okay. Um, oh, help me here. Well, it's, it's really, just, I mean, it's a, again, a, a business venture that I just felt would be, as a mature, person, a city of Des Moines, um, uh, there's not a lot of entertainment that's affordable um, all the, uh, on a consistent basis as far as, um, you know, comedians, open mic night, um, even the Blues on Grand closing, I, I think with some of the connections that I have with for music, I mean, we could really bring some music. And again, again, you have some cocktails, you have hamburgers and hot dogs. That would be a great chicken fingers and french fries. That would be a great um, venue to, to present that. We've done some painting have renamed it the Marquee. I mean, it has its own, hopefully, new identity. Now, to actually changing the actual Marquee on the outside will be quite an investment, but I can worry about that later. But for now, really, just music and comedians and um, open mic night, I think, for poetry, and that'll be fun. And again, secondary and not as much of a moneymaker. Again, another venue for my middle school students and high school students, and of course, I know lots of, you know, school events that we could hold there. Again, not making a lot of money at the door, but certainly, and of course, no alcohol, but of course, but with food, we could make, we could make some with our audience for family and friends and grandparents coming for that. I'm gonna to look to legal. Um, do we have an option of issuing this on probation for six months? Uh, the, the city cannot mandate a probationary uh, license. An applicant can request a shorter license, but the city uh, uh, cannot uh, mandate a probationary license. But we can request that in six months we go in and do an audit of the um, alcohol and the food? At any, any time that there's a reasonable concern um, that the, the city has reason to believe that the food and alcohol are inconsistent with the actual sales, uh, that are going on, then an audit could be uh, requested um, or information could be sought from the applicants. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and move approval. Can I, can I ask one question ahead, first, Christine? Um, when you operate it and as the license holder, you know you're responsible for the facility and all the behavior, even if you have an outside act or you mentioned special events renting the facility. Mm -hmm. um, do you have, do you anticipate like a, a, any other entity regularly using it to host their own events? Um, have I, you brokered any deal with anybody or has anybody approached you like we'd run it once a month or every other weekend? Um, not yet, but that's what I am looking for, you know, kind of having, again, with that regular schedule of, of kind of having, of just reaching out. I think a lot of people don't really know about the place in general anymore, especially my generation doesn't really it's not really, a, it's not on the map, so to speak. And so really to, to raise awareness and have some advertisement, I think once we get our names out there and have comedians to have some successful nights, certainly with, so that's part of the, my business plan, of course, absolutely to have some regularity with uh, certain <coughs> customers. It would be nice to have, like I said, certain, with the local circuit of, even there are drama acts that are, that, that really don't have, they're not really large scale, but they're smaller scale, and they would like to come up and do like short plays and uh, for adults mostly. But you know that kind of a thing. I think with some regularity and some some success, I think I could build that. Also, um, there are local businesses along just right even along Ingersoll with the the, um, in the neighborhood association. Um, like the, there's a tanning place across the street, and they would you know they've expressed interest in, in having you know every other month having a, a, a Sorry, every other month having a an employee party, you know, it's kind of a thing, that kind of a thing to celebrate, um, you know, employees. Have you sat down and success. had conversations with the Ingersoll Business Association? Not and yet. 
That is part of my plan, though. Yes. North the Grand, you've not met with any of the neighborhood groups? No, not yet. Mm -mm. You have a lot of work no, to do. I do. <laughs> but it came up open literally, the, I think it was the 29th, and I saw it on the 30th, and so it's been really just trying to get paint and clean up and all kinds of things, just literal things, and ready for inspection really has been a, a major focus, too. So. Well, I'll go ahead and make a motion to move forward to approve the liquor license, but with reservation. Okay. Um, if there's anything at all that happens as a result of, you know, it not being adhered to properly, uh, you'll be the, I'll be the first one that you're going to hear from. Okay. Because uh, we've just had lots of issues there, and I think it's as much a problem with the landlord. Oh. Um, so I just am really nervous about this over there. And... Um, ask that we monitor the food and alcohol uh, as well. Okay. Okay. So I would suggest you make contact with all the businesses and neighborhood associations as well. I will. I definitely will. Good luck. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else in the audience want to speak on this item? Item's been moved. I'm not feeling comfortable with this again. Mr. Coleman. Seven yes. All right, that completes the consent agenda. Um, for those of you, uh, I might as well tell you that item 41 has been withdrawn. Item 44 has been withdrawn. Uh, item 45 has been withdrawn at the request of the applicant. Item 45 is the Capstone Ventures LLC to rezone property. Uh, in the Central Business District for mixed use, uh, the applicant uh, has, with, has withdrawn the request to rezone the property. Uh, 46 is the uh, uh, a rezoning at 1435 University and uh, uh, the request from the applicant to continue to uh, January 9th, the council meeting, uh, and it looks as though it's been withdrawn, however. So... Um, at any rate, before we move into our um, items, City Manager uh, has a couple of um, comments. Th thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. Tonight is the last regular Council meeting uh, for the year 2011, but it's also the last regular Council meeting for one of our longtime employees and one of our best employees, Gary Fox, uh, uh, is set to retire here in a few days, and he's in the audience. and. I don't, I don't need to tell all of you, but Gary has been just a, a great traffic engineer, is a great traffic engineer, and has done great work for the city and its citizens, and we will miss his uh, intelligence and his fine work for the city. So, Gary, congratulations, and have a great retirement. I was, I was with somebody the other day who was saying, I, I started thinking about the city, and I think every route that you would take through the city is quicker today to do and safer than it was 20 years ago. And they started listing all the little routes that people take to get from one place to the other. And it is a much more manageable city than, than we were even 15, 20 years ago. So good work. Gary, thank you for your many years worth of service, not for myself, but from the whole council and from our citizens. Thank you. Uh, let's... Um, Move on. We have uh, item 42, which is from Councilmember Brian Meyer to speak regarding changing the signs on Highway 5 bypass from Southeast 64th Street to Army Post Road. Councilmember Meyer. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I've had a couple people come to me and ask about this. If, when you go north and you go south on the Highway 5 bypass, there's signs that say Army Post Road exit whatever the exit is, and then a few miles on the road, it's posted as Southeast 64th, which is actually Army Post Road, but nobody knows what Southeast 64th is. Uh, and so the question for the city manager, and I'll refer to the city manager's office, is, is there some way to get those signs changed to say Army Post Road instead of Southeast 64th? There's one going north and one going uh, south entrances so um unless there's any questions i'll refer this to the city manager i know it's 
an important item and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we have had more trouble getting the signage right on that. It's just very confusing to everybody. Councilman Meyer, Councilman Meyer, this is really a great idea. I think it requires the consent of IDOT. Uh, because uh, Highway 5 is a state highway. We'd be happy to work on it. It is a great idea and will help uh, get people in and out of our city. So we'll get busy on it and report back to you. Thanks. Great idea. Seven yes. All right, item 43 is a communication report. This one, uh, item 43, from Robert Conley of 670 Foster Drive to speak regarding the Hampton Inn project. Mr. Conley in the audience. See not, we may be moving a little faster in case he shows up. We'll allow him to. I'll move to receive and file the information. Yep. If he shows up, you're going to let him uh, address us, Council and Frank. He would like to. Okay. I, I would say, Mr. Mayor and Council members, he advised uh, Terry Vorbrook to have a conversation with him earlier today, and he advised Terry that he wasn't coming. But he was not. But coming. it hasn't been formally withdrawn, so you're wise to keep it open at least until you adjourn. Mr. Moore, Mr. Mahaffey. Seven yes. All right, let's, uh, item 50 is regarding a uh, recommendation from the city manager regarding a negotiation of preliminary terms of agreement with SDG Mace Ridge Properties LP for redevelopment of South Ridge Mall, Council Communication number 11 uh, 768. Um, Mr. Manager, uh, would it be okay? Uh, Brian, do you want to yeah, say a couple of things about this? Well, I can briefly address and then turn over to the city manager if we miss something. Uh, this right now is to uh, confirm the council's commitment. I think it was put forth by economic development that um, uh, we look forward to working with Maceridge and with the other entities down there and uh, helping out where we can uh, to make that uh, entire block there, that entire area, a really uh, a first class area. and. Um, as many of you know, a couple weeks ago, we did a, a big press announcement on uh, bringing in the indoor soccer and barnstormers football uh, practice facility, as well as uh, DMAC. And at the same time, they unveiled the, uh, uh, the new plans for Southridge Mall, which is going to be a different look. It's going to be more of a strip mall uh, type look, but it's uh, the intention is to um, make it leaner and, and, and more efficient and hopefully bring some more uh, uh, national chain retailers in to um, fill in the rest of the space. And But this right here, this item is a commitment to work with uh, Mace Ridge and Southridge Mall to make those things happen. I'll turn it over to the city manager. Th thank you, Mr. Meyer, council members. This is, uh, this is really a, a terrific initiative. And you think back not too long ago when this council took some great action with regard to Merle Hay Mall. And that action, I think, was really instrumental in allowing Merle Hay Mall to turn around in that whole neighborhood. Uh, this is going to happen a little bit differently, but it's similarly important. Uh, the council has already taken a action to establish a tax increment district out here. That can be one of the foundation pieces that allows this area to rejuvenate. But at present, you've got DMAC that's talking about making a major commitment there. Uh, the, the Iowa Soccer Association just announced, is what Brian talked to, their plans for a facility at this location in conjunction with the Iowa Barnstormers. And then Mace Rich, who is the owner of the facility, uh, has begun work on sort of redesigning the facility there. Uh, it is really a great opportunity. It's going to be a different facility, as Mr. Meyer said, but this is the time that I think the developer and the community really need to come together and see what we can do to make this something that's really a great asset for the South Side. And I have to keep in mind that just down the street from here is uh, the vastly improving uh, Blank Park Zoo. Uh, again, something that you made happen. Uh, by your commitment to that facility. So I think there are great things in the future for this part of the city. You might recall the term super block, which really encompassed all of this area. Uh, so we're, we're at the front end here with respect to these actions on Southridge. 
the item on your agenda tonight is not really asking you to take any formal action to approve anything, but we would very much appreciate your comments and direction to pursue the matter uh, aggressively, which is our intention. Uh, but there are just a lot of different things that we can do. Uh, I'm really excited about the prospect of turning this into something that's an asset uh, for this part of the city, and hopefully council uh, w will agree with that. It is, it is really novel in my experience to see the convergence of so many important features at one point in time, and it's, it's just a wonderful opportunity for us that I think we need to take advantage of. So with that, Mr. Meyer, council members, uh, I just uh, would ask for any comments and direction that you want to provide to us uh, to keep the ball rolling it's, here. It's my understanding, Rick, that economic development is working on a plan, a economic assistance plan, and that will, <coughs> is that going to come back to us, or how is that going to work? Mr. Meyer, council members, yes. Uh, Rita Connor, Terry Vorvik, and their colleagues are working on a, an economic development plan. We don't really yet have the details of what that would encompass. Uh, we're really in the very early stages here. We're not even sure what the ask would be. Uh, at this point, but it is clearly something that we would be working on and would be bringing it back to council for your uh, further direction on the matter as soon as we have some details on what it would look like uh, and what would be involved in it. Uh, thanks. Any, other? any council members have any comments? Any suggestions? This is, this is moving very quickly, too. What you'll see in the next couple of months is uh, a total transformation of the area just from the mall perspective, so. I, I just, I went out to the press conference and wanted to compliment uh, Brian, uh, Rick was there and others from the city. So was Senator McCoy, who has been very helpful on the south side and I think it's great. I, I echo what Rick said about Merle Hay Mall. Changing this up a little bit uh, provides real promise for retail in that whole area of Des Moines. And I sensed a whole lot of energy for something big happening something new happening so I when we were out there so congratulations Brian thank you I'll move uh, move 50 seven yes item 51 is approving a municipal service center master plan and authorizing city manager to proceed with an RFP for design and construction services for phase one of the project and directing staff to prepare the PUD conceptual plan and initiate the rezoning. Council communication number 11-770 and A is a recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission. Mr. Manager, any comments? Well, Mr. Mayor and Council members, uh, this has been before you before. This is a, a landmark decision tonight. Uh, this evening we're asking you to approve the uh, Municipal Service Center Master Plan. Uh, we're asking you to authorize us to proceed with a PUD concept plan. That's really the, the rezoning process. And we're also asking for your permission to proceed with an RFP for design and construction services for the phase one uh, construction of the facility. Uh, it continues to be, in my mind, one of the most important initiatives we have, not only because the city needs these facilities uh, to accommodate our operations, but even more important because it represents for us the potential uh, to a move to a far more efficient arrangement for the operation of our field operations. Uh, Public Works is going to be directly impacted, Parks is going to be impacted, Fleet Services, other city operations as well. Uh, but the ability to have all of those services concentrated in one area, uh, I, I just can't begin to tell you the positives that will accrue out to the city uh, and the taxpayer over many years. Uh, if you have more questions, the staff has spent countless hours pursuing this. Uh, Larry Hulse in my office has really been the lead coordinator uh, on the work to date, and I'm sure Larry would be happy to come forward and answer uh, any detailed questions that you might have. But, I strongly recommend this to you, even in tight budgetary times. It's these kinds of initiatives that will serve the city uh, and its taxpayers well over the long haul. And I, I hope it's something that uh, you, you are comfortable with going forward with this time. I certainly think it's good for the city. So, Mayor and Council, we'd be happy to answer questions if you have further. I just have uh, one, Mr. Manager, and, and uh, it's sort of one that I continue to say. I hope that in the design phase that uh, we recognize the, the potential uh, around our city 
and to protect our resources from uh, flooding and other uh, natural disasters and that uh, uh, in that design phase we will appropriately address uh, those concerns uh, that uh, to protect our resources uh, from from possible uh, uh, inundation by water or other things. Mr. Mayor, you, you really make a, a, a terrific point, and it's one that we've attempted to be very mindful of. Uh, Bill Stowe, as you know, is our, our expert on all matters related to flooding. And I'd, I'd ask Bill just to make a few comments about how we can approach this to ensure its, its safety from potential flooding in the future. Mayor County, members of the City Council, Bill Stowe Public Works, and I'm, I'm happy to share the expertise that the City Manager has, has uh, described with both the City Engineer and the Community Development Director and their staffs. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this is a, a matter that you've raised with me personally uh, on a number of occasions, and we certainly appreciate the point you're making about the vulnerability of flooding and the need in this uh, Municipal Service Center to be responsive to the greater community needs. Uh, we in Public Works are working very closely with community development and the engineering staff as well as consulting engineers to develop a strategy that has us looking on building standards, uh, ingress and egress into that area of the city in the event of extraordinary flooding uh, to ensure that exactly the concerns that you continue to raise are addressed and we're confident uh, that we're going to be able to work that through in a way that will be satisfactory not only to you but to the community at large. All right. Any other questions, anybody? <coughs> Seeing none, does someone want to move this item? I move 51. And 51A? And 51A. Seven yes. <coughs> All right. Um, We've got a couple of minutes here. I would suggest that uh, we have a motion quickly to recess the City Council and convene as Board of Health. Move. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same. We now sit as the Board of Health. Uh, we convene this evening to, uh, number one, approve the uh, legal department to proceed with court actions seeking the authority to abate the public nuisance at the following locations. A is 2007 Des Moines Street. It's a main and garage structure. B is 413 Shawnee Avenue. It's a main structure and a garage structure again. C is 1124 13th Street. It's a main structure. And D is 275 East 17th Street. It's a main structure and an accessory structure. Is there anyone in the audience here to speak on any of these four items that are scheduled to uh, our legal department is asking to seek the authority to abate these as nuisances? Anyone? Seeing none, board, could I have a motion? I'll move. One move. A, B, C, D. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none. Seven yes. Could we have a motion to adjourn as the uh, Board of Health and reconvene as City Council? Move. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. We now sit as City Council. I would uh, refer you now to. Our hearing items, items 45 and 46, were withdrawn. At okay. All right, 46 is a request from the applicant to continue to January 9th. So we will uh, vote on that. It's a request of uh, Hugh Nunjin uh, to rezone 1435 University Avenue from R3 multifamily residential and limited C1 neighborhood retail commercial to allow for retail development. The Planning and Zoning Commission recommended denial. The roll call contains alternatives for denial or approval and uh, the applicant has requested uh, to continue to January 9th uh, City Council meeting. Anyone in the audience to speak on this item? 
I just have a question, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Do we know what they're trying to accomplish by continuing the hearings? It's been continued mm -hmm. since early fall. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Michael Ludwig, planning administrator. Uh, we've had several meetings with the applicant uh, suggesting that they uh, make contact with an adjoining property owner to obtain some additional land for the rezoning. Uh, they've not uh, obtained any agreements that I'm aware of, but uh, we received a call about 3.30 today that they were unable to be here. Okay. So. so they're actually trying to acquire more land so that then... Yeah. yeah, it would make the property more suitable for the commercial development that they're proposing. And that, that was a recommendation of the Plan and Zoning Commission and staff at that hearing. So, so would P and Z have a recommended approval had they had more land? If they bring in more land, they would need to, go, to back go back to the through. Planning Commission, yes. Okay. Very good, thank you. Thank you. All right. Following that clarification, My, we have a motion. Mike, just one comment I might make. If you could encourage them to kind of move forward. I know they've kind of been passive in getting that land acquired or what they're going to do. And as with the other issue that got removed from our agenda, I mean, constantly continuing it in hopes that they'll one day buy the property probably isn't real exciting to the council. Yeah, uh, w the staff was prepared tonight to recommend just denial of the request. Uh, it's our understanding they don't intend to immediately build a, a building on the property. And uh, if it were denied, they could come back in within a year and ask for a rezoning of the property or add more land would make it a materially different application and there wouldn't be a one year delay. So right. um, I guess on January 9th, if there's not an agreement, we would again recommend denial of the rezoning. And I, I would agree with that, but tonight I would go ahead and move item 46 to be continued. Okay. Six yes. All right, item 47 is on a request from Imperial Properties to rezone 4141 East 14th Street from C2 General Retail and Highway Oriented Commercial to M1 Light Industrial uh, for a chrome Plating Operation Plan and Zoning Commission recommends denial. The roll call contains the alternatives for denial or uh, approval. Anyone here to speak on this item? Mr. Ludwig. Mayor of County and members of the council, Michael Ludwig, Planning Administrator. Um, if we go to the aerial, or I'm sorry, the overhead. Uh, the subject property is located at the southeast corner of East 14th Street and Northeast Aurora Avenue. It's a split zone properly currently. Um, this adjoining parcel next to the rezoning is currently zoned M1 and it contains parking that's located just to the east of the building. The, the entire building that's on the property is uh, currently zoned C2. They are requesting for a land use plan amendment from a commercial auto oriented small scale strip development to a general industrial classification, and then rezoning of the C2 portion of the property to an M1 light industrial zoning. This is the existing building that's, that's on the property, and then uh, the parking that's uh, occurring also on the, on the property. We have a site sketch that they, they did submit. Uh, majority of that parking area was shown uh, in this vicinity. This uh, far portion of the property that's shown on their site plan is the existing M1 zone portion of the property. Um, as far as consent cards, we only received one card and that was in opposition to the request. Uh, the Plan and Zoning Commission was very concerned. Uh, basically, the occupancy of the building uh, has been without a certificate of occupancy. They, they occupied the building without obtaining the necessary permits. Um, the chrome plating operation uh, involves some, some significant chemicals and materials uh, within the building that are required by fire code to be stored in a very safe and secure manner. That is not occurring on the property that we are aware of currently. Um, this business did relocate from, a, from another existing operation in Des Moines. They are downsizing their, their, their operations. They indicated at the Plan and Zoning Commission meeting that they have not been um, conducting any chrome plating operations um, since they were obviously notified of, of the zoning violation. 
but there are still concerns about the storage of the chrome plating chemicals and materials on the property. Um, it was I a unanimous. Have any problems with this company before not being in compliance? Uh, there exist uh, other operations within the city, not that I'm aware of. On this property, um, the the um, owner of the property has had numerous zoning violations on this and the adjoining property uh, through the years. It was a unanimous recommendation from the Plan and Zoning Commission for a denial of the rezoning request. So it would require a six-sevenths vote of the City Council to approve the rezoning. So how long would they have then to move the business? Uh, we or to bring it in compliance, and it doesn't sound like they can bring it in compliance, so. Not without the zoning, they can't. Um, if they don't uh, obtain the zoning that they need, they would need to cease immediately, and we would take action to do so. Michael. Yes. The, uh, the firm that you've had the problems with is Imperial Properties. Correct. Who is the owner of the property, but right. the, um, the lessee is home. I mean, an Imperial, Imperial is not doing chrome plating. Correct. Uh, the applicant or the owner or operator of the business is here to speak tonight, but it's okay. it's it's a chrome plating operation, and I'm sorry, I don't have that name right in front of me. I believe it was in the staff report. But, Mike, the, um, I read, I guess, in one of the documents that they're um, contracting out the chrome plating. So the, the issue still would be the storage of the potentially dangerous materials that are in the building, correct? My understanding is the reason they're contracting that out is because they can't conduct the operations on this premise because of zoning at this time. Okay, and they've been there at this site since 1993, is that correct? No, not since 1993 that I'm aware of. No. They had moved from someplace to... Yes. Yeah. I believe they've only been on this site a short time. So had there been a complaint filed? Uh, I'm not certain how the issue came before uh, the city staff's attention. The zoning enforcement officer has been actively pursuing the, the zoning violation, and, and their remedy was to apply for rezoning. Okay. Mike, if you would be available, if we have uh, further need for clarification, we might as well proceed with the hearing and uh, see if we, uh, the applicant, uh, I, I do have a question for Mike yeah, while he's up here. Under your applicable um, additional information at the uh, planning and zoning under number 4 2020 community character plan, mm -hmm. it says the proposed rezoning to the M1 district with no limitations is not compatible. What if there were limitations put on it? Would it be compatible then or is it any M1 zoning at all is not compatible? Um, it would just depend on the individual uh, rezoning request and what conditions they were, were proposing to agree to. Um, one additional item, I, I did note that in the staff report or the letter from the Plan and Zoning Commission, Tammy Jacobs of Chrome Reflections is the, uh, was the operator that spoke to the Plan and Zoning Commission. I believe they're here this evening. Any other questions, Council? All right, let's go ahead and proceed. Anyone here to speak on item 47? Hello, I'm Tammy Jacobs. All right, Tammy, we'd ask you to, to uh, step up and give us your name and address for the record because it, it goes on our record uh, as part okay. of the hearing. All right. Uh, um, anyone else that's going to speak on this item this evening, we'd ask that you uh, come to the south side and behind Tammy who's going to make our initial presentation here. So um, we get an idea or a sense about how many people are here to, to speak. Oh. All right. Well, I'm Tammy Jacobs, 2404 East 11th here in Des Moines. And we have actually been in business since 1982. And we um, were on East Grand, 1700 East Grand, for five or six years. Then we moved from that location to the 
Pomerantz Building, 1930 Easton Boulevard, and that is um, where we were up until 2009. Our main reasoning, we had leased for 20 years. She didn't want to sell the building. Um, industry had changed. It was way oversized, and we could not keep up with the upkeep of that size of facility is really why we moved. Um, never met Bill Moyer in my life. Just, you know, did ha had no idea we had to research the property that we were looking to go into. I mean, we did look at the city's assessor site, and it said C3M1. We assumed it was either or. Um, you know, we're really not out to hurt anyone, but we need to be able to conduct plating there. Um, you know, it's a specialized industry that we do. We have a lot of rare pieces, and um, right now um, the owner is trucking stuff to a place in South Missouri, and um, it's a small shop. The guy's letting him help him run it, trying to do us a favor until we can get back up and going. But ultimately, that is not our goal. Um, I think we did a mirror frame for you, Mr. County, a nickeled mirror frame from your first store, maybe? Might have. Mm -hmm. And we also did the um, work on the Polk County um, Heritage Gallery doors. I know um, you guys were having to send them out of state to have them just paint stripped and, and worked on, and um, I believe that was a pretty big savings. And I do have um, customers from out of state that have written some letters. And I also have one job in particular that I'm really proud of and a little bit concerned of. We have a 1958 Oldsmobile J2 convertible that the gentleman lives in Switzerland and he has jobbed the, brought the car to Iowa. It's being restored in um, Britt, Iowa so that we can do the, the plating and he's got a couple of pieces that are you know the only two in the world and I really don't want to pack them up and have him hop in a car and drive a couple hundred miles to get them plated you know and uh, that's kind of where we are. We think we're a unique and unique business. Um, there's maybe two other plating shops in the state, and they're really not, um, they don't really do the kind of work that we do. Our basic work is restoration of, you know, antiques, collectibles, rare cars, you know, mirror frames, things you can't replace. We do a lot of stuff for the um, Sherman Hills area, you know, the old bathroom plumbings and things like that. And um, we do we do get a lot of work from out of state. So what is your role with the company? Um, you know, I uh, pretty much do anything. I handle the front. I do business quotes, calls. Um, I'm actually Russ's wife, and he's the sole proprietor. Okay. And how many employees actually are at the business? Um, we have five full-time employees, and then we also have part-time. Okay. And how long have you been in this site? We've been in this building since 2009. We started moving there in August of 2009. Okay. And I don't know if I give these to you. Sure. But... Go ahead. I'll move to receive and file the documents. That's been moved. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Received it. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm Russell McKeon, 2404 East 11th, Des Moines. I'm the owner of Chrome Reflections. Tammy's my wife, like she said. We've gotten a lot uh, smaller, actually. We're not, uh, we don't have a lot of trucks coming and going out of our place. We don't have a lot of uh, uh, semis. You know, we used to have some coming in at the other shop. Like she said, we downsized, and uh, like she said, we never heard of. Uh, Bill Moyer to have moved in there, and uh, that seemed to be our reflection of who we are, but it's not really. Uh, all I, get, I guess uh, all I got to say is it'd be a financial burden on us to have to move. We'd have to cl close the doors, you know. Uh, we had no idea the zoning and all the... When we moved into our other building 20 years ago, there wasn't all the, the occupancy permits and this and that. We moved on spur of the moment because we had to, and that's where we ended up. 
All right. Anybody have any questions of uh, Russ? Russ, thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. My name is Dean Bibler. I live out at Granger, out east of Granger, um, 10 Northwest 121st Street, Granger, Iowa. I'm a chemist of 46 years. I've been restoring 50 years come next spring. I do frame up restorations of cars. If any of, you, if any of you went to Salisbury House's show in September two years ago, that car of mine won first place. It won first place. You want to put it in under the overhead there? It won for, and this is uh, right here. Yep. Yeah. Um, every bit of stainless and chrome on that car was done by chrome reflections in 1989 at one of their previous locations. That's the reason that car won. I'm just one example of probably close to a thousand people that could be standing here if they knew of this meeting to tell you the same thing. As a chemist, I can tell you that chrome reflections is not a dirty business. No chroming industry is a dirty business if you run it right. Somebody to say that those chemicals are so dangerous doesn't know what they're talking about. You got gasoline in your in your in your garage, and it's more flammable and more dangerous than any chemical that they have on the property. Uh, a lot of this has been blown out of hand, and things that don't get said that should be said here. Why aren't is Bill Moyer here? Why don't you guys have Bill Moyer come in here and take care of his problem, which would remove their problem completely? They're not the owner; they're the tenant. They're the victim, and like they say, they didn't know Bill Moyer. Hardly anybody does, but he is, I'll tell you this, I'm not related to them. So he is a crook and been a crook since I've known him since high school in the 60s. <laughs> and you know it too. You've tried to get him. Why isn't he here, like I said? Um, I, I asked Bill not to come. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. Anyway, uh, to ask Bill not to come. Yeah. So we did. A good chrome plating operation is a very clean business. To have it zoned M1 versus C2 makes no bearing has no bearing on it at all. You look at the building, it's clean on the outside. Do you see garbage on the outside and back? No. Do you see a discharge down the drain of chromium and and anything else? Uh, they don't deal with this, but lead, arsenic, all. Do you see a discharge going into the wastewater treatment system? No, because there is no discharge in a chrome plating. You add water, you got electric current, you got an anode, a cathode. The, the current travels in a polar water system. The chemicals, if you're chroming or nickel or whatever, they go from one side to the piece. The piece takes the chemicals. There is no hazardous problem. Um, that's the real chemistry of it, and that's the knowledge that you guys don't have. Um, back to the, the business at hand, why would you ruin a business in town that, that has employees that make a living there so they can go home and feed their families, so the families can go to, go to um, any business out to Jordan Creek or Valley West Mall or Merle Hay and spend money and live here instead of going after Bill Moyer, the problem in the first place, because he never got a permit for them. It's not their, they're the tenant. They're not, it's not their responsibility to know that, that that didn't have a correct permit in the first place. I don't understand why planning and zoning turned it down because it's right next door to, if you go across the street, I think it's M1. So you're right on the, on the border anyway. And then Northeast 14th Street, what else is there? You don't see houses up and down that street. You don't see fancy apartment buildings. You see business. And like, you know, it gets right back to M1, C2. It's a clean building. There's no discharge. You go inside, you ever been in a chroming operation? There's no smell in there when you go in. I've been there plenty of times. I mean, so has everybody else. At least people have been here. There's no smell in there like, gee, I shouldn't be breathing this. Um, Barrett plating, I use Barrett plating for my, for my zinc, which is one of the best places in the country. And they're out, at, they're in the county. You go in Barrett plating and you breathe and you think, gee, maybe I shouldn't be in here. So there's a big difference between chroming and zinc plating. Um, um, Business-wise, too, uh, why do I take my stuff to chrome reflections? There are only so many chrome places in the country, probably a couple hundred. If you remove them from business, I've got to drive a round trip of 600 to 800 miles to take any piece I want, even a single piece, to get it re to get it done correctly. Sure, there are plenty of chroming operations, but they don't all do the same work. If I could, if I, 
thought about it, could have brought some pieces to prove the point. You take it to the wrong promer and you've got a car like they're talking about and you get the pot metal pieces back, which is zinc and some other alloys mixed together, and you'll see grind marks underneath the chrome. That's not what you want. You want a nice, flat, shiny surface. There's quality. Why do I use them? Because of quality. Is that a, me is that a bell for me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Uh, I want to remind everybody that uh, um, the, the applicant here is Imperial Properties. So while they're not here, uh, I understand your dilemma, but uh, let's, let's hear from the rest of the uh, speakers. I'm Barb Karstens. My address is 2643 Morton Avenue, and I do the accounting for them, their, their payroll and stuff. And when they had to move in 2009, they had to shut down for two months. They probably lost over $40,000 in income alone. And that was the first time in years that they had to have the guys collect unemployment. <laughs> and we don't have a bunch of money in the bank to move again. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, besides losing that money, they, it also cost almost $15,000 just to get everything moved. Okay. Thank you. My name is John Pat Dorian, 1224 Scenic Circle, West of Mine. You ever been in here before, John? Mr. Mr. Mayor and <laughs> council members. <laughs> City manager. Hi, Diane. Hi. Yeah, I've been here before, and I, I have a lot of <laughs> compassion for what you're going through. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's difficult. I, and I know I sat there dealing with the land board, and it's... He's been chased around the town forever. And when I walked in, I, and I've had cars, motorcycles, and recently bicycle chromed over there, chrome reflections. But when I walked in, when they moved in over there, and, and uh, Tammy started telling me the already having some difficulties with the landlord, I thought, oh, no. You know? <laughs> she had no idea who she was dealing with. And I'm just here tonight to encourage you to really not throw the baby out with the bathwater. I, she was going to have Bill here, and I said, it, it may not be to your advantage to do that. Good uh, suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they're really good. Uh, chrome play in place, and it's the only one, only one around here. There's, I think there's another one or two in Iowa, but uh, a lot of things you don't, if you treasure it enough or have, have enough value in it to, to have it replated, Sometimes you don't want to sit, put it in a box and put it in the mail and send it away somewhere. You, you know, it's, it's so nice to be able just to, to drive across town and, and have it done right here locally. And, and they do excellent, excellent work. And uh, there's a, I think she could have filled this council chamber if would have put out more people to come. But I, I'm just here to, to uh, ask you to do all that you can. I, I'm not sure what you can do uh, because if you're dealing with a, a landlord that is caused so much grief for this community. Uh, and I think it's more, more than just Des Moines. I think there's other places where, so. But if you could just keep that in consideration, that they're good people, they do good work, and they employ several people there. It's a, it's a family-owned business. Their kids go to school here in Des Moines and everything, and they just, they kind of need a break. Uh, the landlord don't, but the tenant does, and that puts you in an awkward position. So I'm just here to hope that that can happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Evening. <clears throat> My name's uh, Raymond Harris, Sheldahl, Iowa. Um, I guess I've done business with Tammy and Russ for probably 25 years. And I just found out about their problem. I don't even know their landlord. I don't know anything about that or nothing. I just, I'm here and Hoping that maybe somehow you can keep them running because quality, quality, quality. You can't get that kind of work. And like I said, they're they're like family. I mean, we've done work with them for business with them for probably 20, 25 years. I just feel sorry for them of what it cost them to move last time. And I know they can't do it again. And if they they can't do it again, I'm sure they're not going to be in business. And, it's going to hurt a lot of us, so thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dennis Garland. I live at 5109 Southwest 17th Street in Des Moines. 
and I wanted the chance to talk to, on their behalf as well. Like he, everybody has said, they do such good quality. And I remember s responding to an ad that was in the paper like in uh, 82 or something like that, and that's when I met, probably one of their first customers, but uh, just done a lot of business over the years with them. My brother, uh, both of my brothers, um, just like family, just like you said. And um, I have dealt with companies before. I started using them, and you would have to box something up, ship it out. You might not even get back what you sent, and a good chance that so you weren't happy with it. So it's so good and so convenient to have them here, and I know for a fact that they've always employed four or five people, you know, at least, and I think sometimes two shifts. And um, it would just be a big loss to the community, in my opinion, if they had to shut down. So thank you. Dennis, thank you. <clears throat> Gary Berkestrand, Slater, Iowa. Uh, I've been doing business with Chrome Reflections since they first moved to town. And I, what was your address over here, off uh, over by the AE Dairy? 1700 East Grand. All right. Anyway, and the name of the game is quality. Uh, you can't get it anywhere else. Uh, one of the largest economic draws for Des Moines, Iowa, is the Heartland Nationals car show at the fairgrounds. Brings a lot of revenue to Des Moines, due in part to chrome and paint jobs, and uh, that's that's a big deal for a lot of us. With, uh, shipping, quality, uh, I don't know. They're good people. They're honest people. Their kids are on the honor roll. Uh, it's just a shame that they got mixed up with who they did. Thank you. Gary, thank you. Is there anybody else here to speak this evening on this item? Seeing none, um, I'm not sure what uh, the council wants to do on this particular item, but uh, Bob, I wonder if there's some way that uh, in terms of zoning, uh, if the applicant could be these people uh, and the grant be given to them while they occupy it? I don't know either. I, I certainly don't want to uh, do uh, any favors for Mr. Moyer. Um, I would think that um, they ought to put some pressure on him to see if he can't get that building in a condition that could have a certificate of occupancy and that uh, um, I, they may have need a little time to do that whether that would uh, work or not with uh, with Mr. Moyer, you know, a lot of us has dealt with him in the past, and we know what uh, his his uh, reputation precedes him. I would uh, I would like to see if we could uh, defer this a little bit, uh, give them a little time to see if they could put some pressure on him, or if they could find another location. I know they're talking about the cost of relocating, and uh, it sounds like they you know they're good operators. Uh, I, I'm convinced that. They do a good job over there. Uh, I, the property on on East 14th, they keep it nice and clean. And I think our inspectors in it have to work with them to see what they can do about the uh, keeping the uh, um, the uh, rotation of the air and that and controlling of the uh, of the chemicals. But uh, I I really think they run a nice business there. And uh, but you know back we go to uh, Moyer. And that that really has a problem, Mr. Manager. Do you have a th 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 thought? thank you, thank you, Mayor and Council? And in line with what uh, Mr. Mahaffey said, if if the Council uh, is so inclined and you continue this item to the next meeting, we'd be happy to work with uh, the business out here to see if there's some way that we can help them move this forward. And uh, I understand there's some cost issues involved in terms of making the necessary improvements and. Maybe we can link them up with Terry Vorbrick and look at a 504 yeah. loan. I, I don't know what else is available there, but if if it's the council's inclination, uh, and I'm looking to Phil and and Mike to see if maybe we could uh, sit down with the tenant, with the business, and offer whatever suggestions we have, and then report back to you. It, but it's kind of up to you about how you want to pursue on the zoning issue. It just seems to me, given the testimony, that if that's the council's desire, we'd be happy to to spend some time working with them on it. Mr. Mayor, 
Yeah. I am uh, very supportive of working with the company to see what we can do um, to assist them. I, you know, I, I think we need to look at some different options here. I'm also um, very aware of your landlord and the problems. I mean, I drive up and down East 14th Street, and I think he was the worst thing that ever happened to it. I mean, I cannot believe all of the properties and how he just allowed them to fall apart, and it's just been horrible for 20 years probably longer. Um, so when we, we very, I very much want to help you as a company, but we don't want to do anything to line his pockets, to be as right. blunt as you can get about it. But I think that there are some other options through the city that, you know, you're the type of business that we want to help you, we want to see you grow, and let's talk about how we can do that that um, is good for you and it's good for the community as a whole. So um, it sounds like everybody's you know, thinking this along the same lines, and we just need to get, you know, the appropriate people to sit down at the table and work through some different options that would be out there. Yeah. yeah. Mayor. Is there, Mayor? Mayor. <coughs> yes. I've got, I've got some uh, concerns on this. Um, to start with, the neighborhood was not in opposition of this rezoning. Um, we only have one property that is in opposition. Immediately east is M1. Yeah. I'm suspect immediately north across Aurora might be M1, and suspect across East 14th of the West might be M1. Um, being the past president of Iowa Street Riders, you can imagine what I've heard. But I got a phone call today from the uh, Albaugh Museum in Ankeny, which has one of the top Chevrolet collections in the United States. And they express their concern. They do not ship for chroming. They like having somebody local that they can take their chrome to and oversee the re-chroming process. And Andy even told me that if he can't do it there, he's going to Omaha, and he doesn't like driving to Omaha s several times just for one piece of chrome. Um, I think we all realize there's extenuating circumstances with the property owner. And um, I'm totally supportive of this uh, going to uh, economic development and CD to see what we can work out on this. Um, we, we've heard from some folks here, and I think the support is there. And uh, I've never heard of any problems with chrome reflections as far as polluting or, or doing anything like that. I used to live a couple blocks from you when you were on Easton, and there were never any complaints there other than people breaking your windows, I think. So um, I just wanted to add that in there. I, I do think this needs to go back, and I don't know if we need a report back at the next council meeting or take a little bit longer if necessary. But. Phil, some thoughts? Uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Phil Delafield. Uh, Community Development Director speaking to you tonight as your building official. Uh, as with most operations, there are building code regulations that apply. In this case, the category of use that is applicable to a chrome plating operation is different than what the building currently has. That's the underlying issue here. It can be done safely. There are code issues that need to be addressed. Uh, community development is supportive. If you choose to uh, recommend a continuance for us to explore those options, make sure that they're within the budget of the, uh, the applicant, see where the opportunities are. There are solutions that are available, but there are some solutions that need to be done to need to be found in order for the building to be safely used and a certificate of occupancy obtained. It's not not doable. It's just that there are some issues that have to be addressed. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Phil. Mayor, could I, could I say one more thing? It's for Dean. Um, don't be angry at the Planning and Zoning Commission. Those people, they have an extremely hard job to, to advise us, and it was unanimous, and they're just trying to do what's best for the community. And I, I don't want you to think that they're just a bunch of people that just... Okay. But they also have had a lot of uh, history with uh, the property owner. That was obvious in the <laughs> All right. Why either you or somebody can't put the guy in jail? All right, uh, <laughs> Mayor. Mayor, if we proceeded as I, I think Bob and others have um, uh, have proposed, it, are, are I mean, are they temporarily in compliance as we go through this? I mean, there's not. No. So how does how does that work in terms of 
because I'm supportive of this. I just want to make sure that, you know, 30 days or 60 days from now, it doesn't come back to bite them because they continue to operate somewhere. Well, I don't think, uh, could, could one of the owners come forward real quickly and my thought is if we needed to do something yeah. to allow that today, I'd like that to be part of our action if uh, Mr. Lester or Clark had some idea for us on how to. It, it's, it's my understanding that you're not plating at the moment. You're buffing and you're doing some other stuff, right. but yes. you're not plating. No. Um, you would like to get in a situation where you could plate. Oh, yes. Yeah, we'll have a lot more control, a lot more, it's a lot more profitable for us. Okay. And... Uh, um, I don't know, and Mike, I guess you would be the one that, that would have to answer this. I mean, to, to accomplish what you're talking about, Mr. Coleman, I don't know that they can do that. But, Mike, do you have some thoughts? The chemicals are no more hazardous sitting there like they are right well, now. Right. Okay. And using them. Again, it's, uh, Phil kind of spoke to this, but it's my understanding they have an H occupancy under the building code, which is a hazardous occupancy. Um, they would have to make renovations or alterations to bring their systems into compliance for the plating operation. I would not recommend allowing them to do plating until those those uh, mechanisms are in place. I, you know, they they've been allowed to continue non-plating operations on the property in the interim, and they can still do that. Um, the the issue with the zoning is is that the owner of the property would have to sign and agree to any conditions that are placed on the zoning of the property. So unless they're able to either acquire the property and be the owner of it and be able to sign those conditions. I, I don't know whether we'll be able to get uh, uh, Mr. Moyer to sign any of those conditions. Um, the other issue is I'm not certain what their <coughs> lease provisions are as to who's responsible for uh, alterations to the building or tenant improvements, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think um, if uh, this comes back on the 9th that at a minimum, there would need to be a condition that there's some sort of a financing plan or something presented that, you know, clearly identifies who will be making the improvements to the building and, and that there's proof that there's there's money for that. I think they've indicated tonight that they, they are having difficulty with finances to move again. I don't know what the improvements to the building would cost, but there, there should probably be some analysis on that. Okay, so but, if, if we could get the, the improvements and, and give them a list, uh, Phil, of the things they have to do, and they could get price specific so you could figure out exactly what that is. I think the problem that we have as a council is we don't want to put the city in a libelous situation where we grant somebody an opportunity to, to do a business that we've found that is out of compliance, and uh, we would then inherit some liability, I would think. Plus, you'd have those that are out there in the community that would say, we let this guy do it. And uh, I would guess that probably not everybody that is in business operates the same way that you folks do. And so we would uh, have a, 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 a bit of a situation. So if we could, as expeditiously as possible, meet with these folks and quickly let's see what they need to do to get in compliance so that they could operate and, and then uh, get this, this resolved, I think that that seems to be the, the wish of, of from what I'm hearing here right. tonight from the council, if we could do that. Um, either Ms. Coleman or Ms. Hensley, did you have something else you want to say? No. Okay. Agree with everything yeah, Bob, said. Uh, yeah, are we ready for, is Bill Four here? here? Yeah, mm -hmm. if there's a motion that. Okay. I, I would uh, move that a staff uh, works with these people and determine what is needed and bring it back to council. I don't know whether we need uh, 30 days or what do we need for them to staff to to uh, get with them, and uh, probably it's not going to be a real easy uh, task to go through and, and identify everything that's needed, but... Uh, Perhaps you we could continue it to the next meeting, and we'll see what we can do by that time. We may have to continue to a meeting that's after that, meeting too, but... January. Okay, I'll move we continue to the next meeting and have staff work with them. Yeah, see what we can put together by the next meeting. Uh, it'll be right after the our first meeting in January. 10th. January. 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 So... January 9th. Um, January 9th. January 9th, so I think that's your motion, right? Continue to January 9th, right. and uh, let's see if we can't come back with a solution that uh, helps to get them doing your work. In the meantime, though, you can't, no chroming, and do you have to continue with what you've been doing? No additional work, uh, chroming or anything? 
seven, yes. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Phil, do you, uh, do you want to meet with them out in the hall and see if we can't immediately start working on uh, what we need to do? <coughs> Thanks. Okay. Uh, Item 48 is on the demolition at Southern Meadows, Phase 2, 2800 Southeast 8th Street, resolution approving the plan specifications, form of contract documents, engineer's estimate, and receive and file bids and designate the lowest responsible bidder as DiCarlo Demolition Company, Dan DiCarlo President, $137,900, Council Communication Number 11 763 is approving the contract and bond and a permission to sublet. Everybody in the off audience to speak on this item. 48 and 48A. <clears throat> Seeing none. I'll move 48 and 48A. It's a great project. Look forward to the demo. Seven yes. Item 49 is on the uh, Southeast Connector demo on site prep, Southeast 9th to Southeast 15th Street. Resolution approving the plan specifications, form of contract documents, engineer's estimate, and receive and file the bids and designating the lowest responsible bidder as Elder Corporation, Jared R. Elder II, President, $1,059,999.99. Council Communication Number 11 759 is approving the contract and bond and permission to sublet. And B is approving the professional services agreement with Kirkham, Michael, and Associates, Inc. for construction phase services not to exceed $84,000. Council communication number 11-764. Is there anybody in the audience to speak on this item? It's like a price is right number there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. Hey, we're down to the penny. And not to exceed, right? It's a great project. Certainly something we need to continue with, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll, move, uh, I'll move 49 and 49 A and B. Has been moved. Any discussion? The only comment I would make is it came in over the construction estimate of a couple hundred thousand dollars, so I'm assuming that we have that in place. Yes, we do. In terms of the money, you mean? But it, Correct. Yes. But there was a number of them that were over. All of them that bid were over, yeah. Seven yes. All right. I want to wish everybody here a happy holiday, a Merry Thank Christmas, you. and a Happy New Year. And I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. It's been moved. All in favor say aye. 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 We sit adjourned. Thank you all for attending. That's it.